All right, y'all, it's that time of the year. We're gonna get down straight into it, man. I had to compile this list of my top 10 sneakers of 2023. Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. And it's that time of year again, the time of gifting. And I can't just give y'all anything just ordinary. I gotta give you something ultra. We're talking about the Manscaped Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. This isn't just any grooming package. It's a full on grooming experience. Let me break down to you what makes this package so special. First things first is the Lawnmower 5.0. It comes with two interchangeable blades, both featuring skin safe technology, the trimmer blade, as well as the foil blade, easily interchangeable. One of my favorite features on the blade, of course, is the spotlight. So when you are, you know, down below and you're in a very dark and, you know, not well lit area down there, you got an LED light to help you, you know, get right through what you got to get through. And this is a bigger LED light than previously. But what's even more incredible is that it's a dual temperature light. You got a warm one as well as a light one designed to work with multiple skin tones out there for precise shave, no matter the complexion. And the great thing about the lawnmower is that it's waterproof. So you can use it in the shower or use it with shaving cream. It's a win-win. Cleaning it is also extremely easy. And maybe you don't want to go all the way down to the skin. Maybe you want a specific length. Well, it comes with a three length setting comb from 1.4 millimeters to 12 millimeters. So you have a good range of how much change you want left over. You have the USB-C charging port on the bottom for fast and efficient charging. And speaking of the battery, the battery holds up to a 60 minute charge. That's just nonstop, one hour straight. And of course you have the 7200 RPM motor that is built into this actual trimmer, which is a powerhouse. And that provides enough power to give you that clean and efficient shave. And maybe you're worried about how much power you got left. There's a three LED light indicator to let you know how much power you got left as well as a travel lock feature that you simply just hold down the travel lock button once you see the lights light up like that bam you never have to worry about them accidentally cutting on again the weed whacker 2.0 also features that skin safe technology is waterproof as well and it can be used in the shower so whether you got nose or ear hairs you're covered everywhere and once you're done down below you got the crop soother lotion it's the aftershave for your balls and it's dermatologist tested alcohol free fragrance free and it helps soothe razor burns, and itching as the hair regrows. And you can't forget about the crop preserver, the ball deodorant of the future. Clear drying, quick absorbing lotion that just gives you a great feeling down below once you get out the shower and after a great and wonderful shave. You also have two free gifts that comes with these packages. One being the Boxers 2.0 as well as the brand new travel bag. And the Boxer 2.0 isn't any ordinary boxes. They feature one of the brand new comfortable parts of the Boxer, which is called the Jewel Pouch. It's where your balls are cradled and sit very pleasantly, giving you a very comfortable feeling overall. And then of course the Shed 2.0, which is an upgrade for those people that like to have all their essentials on the go. So there you have it, the brand new performance package 5.0 Ultra. Check out the link down below in the description and you can get 20% off your whole entire order plus free shipping and free international shipping. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Grab this for you or a gift for someone else. Thanks for watching and salute to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. Now guys, this is my list, okay? Please just take it as my list. This is not the list of what's cool and what's not. If a shoe that you love and that you think is number one on the list is not on my list or is that number 10, that don't mean that you lame, that you not cool, that you don't got no taste. This is Tony D2 Wilds top 10 list. So I just don't want this to be any personal level. Like, yo, how dare you put this shoe, this, guys, it's my opinion. It's not my fact at the end of the day. So without further ado, let's get into number 10. Coming in at number 10, guys, we have the Action Bronson New Balance 990 V6 Baklava. Now this dropped on March 17th for a retail price point of $220. And New Balance, in my opinion, as much, like they, they've been killing it when it came to collabs. Joe Fresh, 
Amy DeLeon, uh, you got the Action Bronson collabs, and I'm pretty sure more down the pipeline, even, uh, but we'll leave, what's the other guy name? Our Minds, or Our Minds the rapper, he also got his collab from New Balance, and they have been going stupid. Now, with that being said, I think when Action Bronson came through and dropped this shoe, it definitely shook waves for a lot of sneakerheads out there. Him as a, a rapper, his personality, and then the collaboration itself, what he represents, he's just definitely has his own cult following, and I think that cult following really resonated with the shoe as well as just as a great sneaker overall. The colors, everything about it just was very loud and popping, but at the same time, it was a good overall sneaker from New Balance. And I feel like New Balance is really going with those cult following designers and artists. I kind of like what they do there. And I think that that type of, like, like the playing field that they're on, they need to stick with that. Not jump in like a Nike that goes for like these high artists like a Drake or a Travis, but more so with these people that have these tight knit fan bases and you know supporters I, I like what they're going with and i think this shoe honestly might surprise a lot of y'all on this list but also kind of went under the radar but for me personally it's a shoe that i remember releasing having a lot that went along with it and selling out pretty fast as well so it had its own little you know base of followers and supporters and unfortunately i didn't hit on them at all so number 10 action bronson and the baklava Coming in at number nine, you're probably already in the comment section saying, you said Amy De Leon. Yes, I did. Amy Leon Dior, okay? I always say this name wrong, all D, all A-L-D. I've always said the name wrong. Probably because I have a friend, Salus Tezea, whose last name is De Leon. And for some reason, my mind wants to say Leon Dior, it wants to say De Leon. Now, this is probably one of the reasons why there, okay? Aldi, I understand what it is. But number nine, we did have a new New Balance release from Aldi, A-L-D. And that was the New Balance 860 V2. It released on April 4th for a retail price point of $150. And this was, of course, with the Seesaw colorway, another shoe that kind of went under the radar. But I, you know, putting this one above Action Bronson definitely was a little bit of left and right here. You couldn't really go wrong either way. I really just like, though, what ALD has been continuing to do with New Balance. And in my opinion, they kind of have led the way or popped things off for this type of path that we've seen with New Balance. And my opinion, as far as going back and seeing when New Balance has made through, you know, you know, it had that breakthrough when it came through with the collaborations. It was ALD that I really remember that really popping off with with the 550s and then the 650s as well. And then came along all the other collaborations. Not to forget, though, I would say really now that I think about it, I got to say Ronnie 5 definitely probably, you know, just popped off the running collaboration genre in general. But with that being said, this shoe was another one that hit, you feel me? And they continue to hit. Uh, and, you know, ALD is continuing to do numbers at the end of the day. So salute to them. Number nine. Coming in at number eight, we have the Nike SB Dunk Low Born and Raise. RIP Desponto. These released on September 28th for a retail price point of $130. I'm not going to sit here and cap. I mean, obviously, the passing of Sponto made this shoe a craze, extremely hype. But at the same reason, I'm just looking at it from the aspect of the shoe, the collaboration, and that's it. You feel me? The, the, I mean, definitely him passing, unfortunately, will make it to a reseller's head or someone out there want to make you know way more money off the shoe unfortunately and for that reasoning some people might even put it up on their list at number five three two one like all that and me personally the shoe for what it is based upon that and like i said condolences and respect to born and raised and sponto i do put this shoe though at that eight spot and i think that's a pretty good spot overall i think it was a very good shoe a very nice looking shoe and i think overall it was just a very good looking shoe there was a big following for born and raised i even wore born and raised i learned about born and raised from Jacob Starr a few years back who was close friends with Sponto as well. So like they have as well, once again, as I spoke before, like a cult following. It was a big brand, don't get me wrong, but it had its own following as well that was well respected in the community. And I think the design along with that exposure, along with the, the reputation of the brand, it definitely deserves a top 10 spot in my opinion. Compared to this other collabs out there, I feel like even the Powder Puff Girls, they were cool and all, they were nice, but People are gonna resonate with a shop. Maybe not, I take it back. People are gonna resonate with the, with the cartoon as well, but Born and Raised has its own reputation before the collaboration with Nike is what I'm saying. And the dunk itself, that it looks good, it just adds on to it as well. Coming in at number seven, we have the Tiffany Air Force One. Now this is, in reality, when I look at the numbers here, I think this is the most expensive 
flipper dipper shoe on the market it's just shoe that's the highest resale i would say right now at the same time it's probably one of the shoes i would say maybe it is the most expensive retail sneaker out here these were released back on march 7th of 2023 a very hyped up sneaker um yes you can call me a hype beast i don't give a damn at this point it is what it is people are gonna you know give their opinions but the reason why this shoe is so you know had to be on the list is because of the collaboration itself you know tiffany the the brand actually collaborating with nike before we had tiffany dunks we've had dunk highs and dunk lows sbs tiffany dunks that were collabs with diamond supply the clothing line but they were obviously bringing that color in to resemble the actual tiffany company well now we fast forward and actually have the actual brand themselves collab with nike on a shoe and they bring all the aesthetics and everything that comes with tiffany co to the nike shoe and there's a collaboration it's the same equivalent to i feel like a christian dior and nike collab or jordan collab but at the same time i even put this one a little bit higher because tiffany's been around i want to say tiffany's been around damn for sure hot way longer than dior because tiffany has been around since the 1800s dior was founded in 1946 salutes but tiffany founded in 1837 so there is a reputation that precedes this brand and this collaboration. I got to say, you can be mad at me or you want, probably one of the biggest sneaker and brand collabs of all time. You got two billion dollar companies coming together. I mean, you do got your Nike and, ba uh, Nike and Supreme or Adidas and Bape, big brands, but I'm trying to think of another company that we can even put to the caliber of a Tiffany. It's just, it's not something you typically see. And of course I was able to get my hands on these bad boys. So that just adds to the sauce, do my review. And I uh, still haven't really rocked them, unfortunately, because yeah, they're, 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 they're up there. Coming in at number six, we have the J Balvin and Jordan 3 Sunset of Medellin or Medellin Sunset, my bad. These released on September 23rd for a retail price point of $200. J Balvin, I think, came out with his best collab yet. The Jordan 1 looked good. The Jordan 2 was nice, but the 3, I think, definitely hit. Now, I had the 3. I do know I no longer have the 3. This is not this is a shoe that's very dope. It definitely deserves its recognition on the list. But Tony, why would you put this above a Tiffany Dunk? Well, I feel like this shoe was way more attainable. That's why the Tiffany was so further up on this list, because it's a really, it was probably one of the hardest shoes, in my opinion, to obtain. This one, on the other hand, a little bit less harder to obtain definitely hard but less significantly than a tiffany air force one i hope that i didn't say tiffany dunk but this shoe was really nice the quality the craftsmanship everything about it i love the cream colorway we do have a black one coming out later on in 2024 so i'm looking forward to getting my hands on that and give you guys a review i definitely uh did not want to get rid of it but i just did not need it that's just the thing if i don't need it i don't have to go get it it's just it is what it is definitely was a shoe though i cried a little bit about but I'm okay with it at the end of the day. I have a big, big collection, and it's time, as you guys can see, even up there, it's time to let some things go. But this doesn't take away from the fact that I think this was a very big collection, a very dope collection. I think it was one of the best collabs, you know, collaborators with Jordan Brand right now. You got Jay Balvin over on Jordan Brand. You got Bad Bunny over with Adidas, and they doing their thing. You know, the uh, reggaeton, you know, uh, Latino artists, they killing it. Salute, salute, salutes. Coming in at number five, we have the Jordan 1 Low, Travis Scott, black olive now i'm not gonna lie this shoe definitely in my opinion like earlier in the year was gonna be like top three it was up there you know um definitely a dope shoe i mean it's definitely dope we i think it's the only well we did have the golf and unfortunately i'll be honest the golf didn't make this list okay i ain't that much of a hype beast it's a golf shoe okay nothing wrong with that I'm just saying it's a golf shoe like it just it didn't resonate with me that well but um the black olive definitely uh was up there it other shoes came out and pushed it down it just is what it is i like my reverse mochas probably still a little bit more but i do think the black olives definitely are one of the dope colorways of the collection but i like it there's nothing wrong with it quality's great everything's great i'm looking forward to seeing what else travis does i the mac the little mac attack thing that they had going on was corny but hey it don't take away from the fact that the shoes and the colorways are pretty nice now i'm looking forward to seeing travis drop his own sneaker and see what he can do with that Looking to see how, you know, how the hype continues on. If it does or how much longer does it go on for? Like, I'm looking forward to all that at the end of the day. But I'm not going to take away from the fact that uh, Travis Scott definitely high on the list, number five. But it was maybe maybe three or three or four beforehand. It definitely uh, went up. 
think some other shoes came in and at least changed my mind. At least, like I said, this is my list. It's not the overall consensuous list at the end of the day. But number five, Jordan 1 Low, Travis Scott, Black Olive. Coming in at number four, we have the Nike Dunk SB Low Haritos. Um, these released on May 10th. Retail price went 130. In my opinion, and uh, maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm foreshadowing too much, but this would be I think the best Nike Dunk SB that released this year. People will probably say Powder Puff Girls because they're just getting that 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 hit right now. It's fresh, so it's like excitement. But when you look back at every Nike SB Dunk that released this year, in my opinion, I think it's the Haritos that come in at number one. I think the craze, uh, everything about the shoe, um, it definitely resonated well within the sneaker community. I think it was a dope shoe. Unfortunately, I was not able to get my hands on it, but I definitely think it was a dope shoe overall. And I think it maintained its number one spot for the Nike SBs releasing amongst this year. Powder Puff Girls, extremely nice. It is on the back end of 2023 and it is a pack. So it's kind of hard. I mean, you could, I guess you could put the whole pack and say it is, with, you know, put that there. But it released today, I think. If you're watching this on the 14th, I'm on the internet. I don't see people going crazy about it. I don't see pictures of people watching cartoons when the Haitos were coming out. People was drinking their Haitos and and uh, eating their Tika chips and every. It was it was a craze going on. It was it was memes and viral videos floating around when that shoe dropped. I don't see fighting crime trying to say. I don't see somebody with a crazy powder puff girl collection, you know, showing them. It's just, I don't see that stuff floating around right now. And in my opinion, it's just a better looking shoe, okay? It is what it is. Now that we're in the top three, I want to give some honorable mentions. First one is the J Tips and Saucony Azura 2000. And that, of course, is the Remember Who Fronted. I think J Tips came through and went stupid. Uh, the first time I heard J Tips was hats. He dropped his hats, he had hat pins and all that stuff. That's the first thing I heard, okay? Maybe I'm behind. But I remember hearing Jay Tips with his collabs with hats. Then he came through and killed it with the Saucony collab. And he just dropped another collab at Two Colorways, I think, that just dropped like this past week. So Jay Tips is someone coming up on that forefront on that same type of, I feel like that same type of, you know, Joe Fresh type of vibe at the end of the day. My man Joe Fresh, he he been killing it. But Jay Tips is definitely, you know, I don't like to compare people. I want everybody to be great. But what I'm saying is I see two black brothers doing a thug dizzle and I love it. And Jay Tips, if you see this, man, hit your boy up, man. Look, I mean, I know Soul Play be getting his shoes all the time. But hit me up, man, personally, you feel me? Like, let me see what's up with you, brother. Let me, let me, let me do a couple reviews, you feel me? Next up, we have the I My Man Year 5. Was a dope shoe as well. Um, did the did the dusk even drop? I'm not capping. Like, maybe I'm behind. I remember the dawn, of course the dawn dropped, but I didn't really see, like, uh, maybe I'm just out the loop, but I like the Jordan 5. More so, I would say the dawn pair. Did I say the yeah, the white pair? I like that one a little bit more. The black pair is nice, but the white pair just pops out a little bit more. A personal favorite of mine, the Jordan 8 playoff that came, you know, it didn't make the list, but I definitely, it's definitely one of my favorite personally that I'm happy to have in the collection, you know, updated. So I definitely want to just mention that one. Of course, the Jordan 11 Gratitude, the Jordan 11 did not make it. I don't know, the, the, I wonder if I made, the, the, the Cherries made the list last year, because I feel like this might be one of the first times that a Jordan 11 did not make my list. That's crazy, but I'm just keeping it 1,000. And last but not least, Joe Fresh just recently dropped his 1998 collab with New Balance, or the uh, 990 V4 1998, which is, you know, paying his tribute to Belly, and he dropped a three-pack shoe, a three-shoe pack, and uh, I'm loving it. I like it a lot, and Joe Fresh, I definitely, you know, think that you could have been in this list, man. I just feel like that shoe so... It, it just now dropped, you feel me? So, and I'm gonna end up uh, contradicting myself, but that's just, this is like, once again, it's a personal thing with me that I'll make it make sense. But Joe Fresh, salute to you, brother. And uh, you might be seeing some more Joe Fresh stuff popping up on this channel. So let's get it pop. Coming in at number three, we have the Kobe 6 Grinch. Tony, you just said that the shoe that Joe Fresh dropped is like so sudden, but these haven't even dropped yet. These are dropping today or whatever, December 15th. Well, I knew about the shoe for a very, very long time. You know, I knew about the shoe 20, what, 2020, the year that we won the championship. Was that 2021 or by 2020, 2021? Yeah, AD was rocking it. So when I saw this and I knew that was coming out, it's been a hyped up shoe for me for quite some time. So I don't give a damn. And this is my list at the end of the day. I think that the Kobe Grinch definitely sits amongst some of the top out there, top five, top 10. It should be on everybody's top 10 list. But if it's not, that's fine. I, I, it's fine. You could think the shoe's ugly. You're not a lame guy. You're not a, uh, no less of a man. But me personally, like if you tell me it's not in there, it is what it is. I ain't gonna look at you crazy. But definitely, in my opinion, this one, deserves the top three. And it's releasing on December 15th, retail price point 190. 
And uh, of course, you know, it's the, the Grinch and it's reversed. Iconic colorway, reversed. So yeah, it's gotta be there. I'm a, and you guys know I love Kobe, so don't question me, please. Just don't question me. Coming in at number two, I gotta give it up to the Reimagine 3, okay? I'm an OG guy at heart. I could put this one at number one. I'm an OG guy at heart, bro. I love my OG stuff at the end of the day. So with that being said, I gotta put it up there, bro. This one did release uh, what, what, earlier in February and it still holds weight. Uh, March, March 11, 210 was the price point. Of course, an OG Jordan 3, Nike Air on the back, iconic color. One of the best, if, you know, for some people, the best Jordan model, model to ever release. This is like, this is the, you know, this, you got this, these, you got the white cement fours, bread fours, black cement threes, and then you got Concords. Those are some of the best shoes that people will ever put, you know, on their top 10. Of course, you got the Chicago ones and stuff too, but these just hit different. You feel me? This, like this hit different for a lot of people. So when these came out and we got Nike Air, it's been since 2013, I want to say since the slam dunk, the 1988 slam dunk, I believe it was called Jordan 3, that had the Nike Air. It's been, a, it's been, a, the 1988 was the shoe. There was a slam dunk shoe also called, or the, the line or free throw line or something like that. I think it was a slam dunk because it was the 1988 Jordan 3. It had Nike on the back. It was paying tribute to the slam dunk, the slam dunk contest. Then there was the free throw line when that dropped that was kind of the same way, but it had a clear bottom with a, a red line on it. And then we got the reimagined version. So, yeah, number two. Coming in at number one, Hype Beastie. I don't care. I don't care. The Nike SB Jordan 4. I mean, need I say more? Nike SB collab, they always been dope with Jordan brand. Lance Mountain Jordan 1s. Uh, we had the other one, I forgot, I always forget the name. It was like a Jordan 1 patent. It was like black and olive or something like that. Um, we had various different ones. We have the, I have another one up there, one of my favorites, the LA to Chicago, the one that, you know, that fades or whatever, kind of like the Lance Mountain effect, the SB Jordan 1. But this is the first time we've seen it go on a Jordan 4. And for that reasoning, it was a monumental thing. They rebuilt, reconstructed the four to fit the life and love of a skater at the end of the day. And I ain't a skater, so I don't give a damn. You can be mad at me, skaters, but hey, you don't have to be a basketball player to wear basketball shoes. I don't think you need to be a skater to wear skater shoes. Sue me. But that doesn't take away from this shoe. Um, this was definitely, in my opinion, the best release and probably still one of the shoes that sit with a lot of people. Like I said before, those Tiffany's are going for $1,000. These are going currently for like $357. These released on, I see it here, March 21st, 225 was the price point. And a great looking shoe, a great quality shoe. And I have nothing negative to say about this one so ever. This one's definitely staying in the collection for a very, very long time. So yeah, guys, let me know you guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section, uh, you know, where you rank yours at. At the end of the day, I appreciate all the criticism, the comments and everything down below. But as always, you know, this is my list. Don't take it personal. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And I'm out. Peace.